Can we just take a step back for a minute? What's up guys welcome back to the channel so for this video I thought we'd do something a little bit different and do kind of a not really a shop tour because it's not a shop but um, just kind of tour my my workspace and some of the stuff that I'm using just for those of you that might be interested and then I also thought this would be a good good video for me to look back on years from now just to see um, what has changed and where I started out doing this at so uh, let's just kind of go for a little trip here and I'll show you my not really a shop. What do you think? Okay, so I'll start with the lathe. Um, this is a Jet 1015 VS, which means it's a variable speed. Um, the way Jet does their uh, model numbers, it is the 1015 means this has a 10 inch swing over the bed rails and a 15 inch spindle length. Um, but I'm going to tell you that's uh, not all that accurate because this particular blank right here um, measures out at about nine and a quarter inches. And that's pretty tight. I don't know that you'd ever get a true 10 inch blank on there without it hitting the bed rails. Um, and then the length is not actually going to be a full 15 unless you were to move the tailstock way back like that you might get to 15 inches so <clears throat> i think the 10 15 is a little generous um, i do like the variable speed so as you can see it does not have a rpm reading on it which i also like but um, that's just because I prefer to not look at the RPM gauge and say, oh, it must be at 600. I prefer to actually watch what the lathe is doing and look at the vibration and adjust from there. Um, I picked up this lathe used on the local market uh, for about a third of what it runs new. So for me, it was a pretty good deal. I started out on this little guy down here. This is a older craftsman lathe and this was my wife's grandpa's lathe uh, when i first started out i kind of had an interest in this and she said oh well my grandpa had a lathe and um, sadly he's no longer with us so this stuff sat in storage for a very long time when i got this lathe back it was all in pieces the motor had been removed from it the motor was in a separate box from the motor housing and all the rest of the stuff and as you can see here, this is the fan that goes on the motor and it was broken off. So the problem that I had with this lathe was that it would overheat really bad and the motor started to develop issues. So I stopped using it um, before the motor got completely burned up. It's still a good lathe and it still runs, but in the cold it was developing a lot of problems because the motor would get hot and then it would sweat and things were not doing real well. So I picked up the Jet. Um, along with Grandpa's lathe came all of these tools that you see here. Um, this is the original tool rest for the Jet lathe. I bought a Rockler longer one there with the, with the Easy Slide top on it. I like that a lot better. Um, all of these tools were grandpa's as well. There's various different um, roughing gouges and bowl gouges and spindle gouges in here. Nothing out of the ordinary, really. A couple different skews, or as I like to refer to them, the devil's can opener. We do not get along very well, me and the skew. I ground this one. Um, it was ground the same as the other skew you see there, and I ground it with a radius trying to get to where we could get along a little bit better it's it's worked a little bit but not a whole lot i'm i'm just not very good with the devil's can opener um a couple round nose scrapers um one rather large round nose scraper here 
So just some various tools that Grandpa had. Um, so I'm very lucky that I have all of these. You know, there's parting tools in there as well. So I've got pretty much everything I need. Um, and I'm very thankful that Grandpa had all of that. The only ex specialty tool that he had was this Robert Sorby multi-tip. Um, th so this has a, a hollowing tip that goes in here. And it also had a a scraper attachment to it as well uh, so that's the only actual specialty tool grandpa had and then of course my rockler face shield and i also have the rockler um apron as well on the bikes we'll talk about that in a minute as you can see this is my what i call the gopro tree um so i have two gopros there Generally, the one on the bottom is down a little bit lower about at the top of the lathe level and then that one looking down on it. This particular GoPro I set here looking at the lathe. Um, so that's how I get my different angles. Sometimes I attach it here, looking there. Um, and then a little LED light. I really like that thing. It is flexible and really bright. So it works well, and it's just a magnet base, so I can move it wherever I want. Maybe I want it on the tailstock, maybe I want it over there, I don't know. On the shelf behind me, um, I built a little rack up there for all of my clamps, but, you know, that's um, less wood turning and more for woodworking. Some of my other woodworking tools there on the counter, um, you'll see a lot of DeWalt stuff. My wife used to work for DeWalt for uh, about 20 years, so... There's a lot of DeWalt things in my life. Um, this is my my sharpening setup. I just went with this little Wen. It's very dusty at the moment. Um, eight inch slow speed grinder. And this is the Savannah Pro Grind jig setup. I really like it. The rest of the attachments are on the wall behind it. It's got all of the um, all of the all of the different attachments for it to just set it up and and use it real quick for repeatability and everything uh random orbital sander back there as well so i really like the savannah pro grind it works really well um i know a lot of people uh use other systems but i like this one quite a bit it it was affordable and it works excellent um DeWalt miter saw under there and a little cordless uh, chainsaw that needs a real good sharpening. Some blanks laying over there. This is a very old 10 inch Craftsman variable speed bandsaw that I picked up for $20 on the local used market. Not the greatest bandsaw, but for 20 bucks it gets me where I want to be. And then a little Craftsman um, table saw that I slide out when I need to use that. And then the counter there, you can see some more tools and blanks and various things. Started keeping all of my finishing stuff over here. Um, blanks are starting to gather there. Space heater there, that's very important um, because this space is my garage. And that means that the motorcycles are in here. And this car that I've owned since high school that I will do something with someday, I swear. Um counter wraps all the way around there i'm still trying to clean this up and figure out how i'm going to use it and then my workbench here and of course you see a what is going to be a five string bass guitar on that that i'm building that's another one of my hobbies that i do other than wood turning is i build guitars um and i'll 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 put a link to my youtube channel for that but um there is no video of this particular build on there because for some reason I didn't think to film this one. And um, so there, but there is some other stuff that I've done on that channel and I'll put some pictures of uh, some of my custom paint jobs. So you can take a look at that as you go. So then looking at this counter a little bit further, um, this space here has started to become kind of my showroom, if you will. These are all past turnings that I've done. Um, by the time this video airs, some of the videos for these may or may not be live yet, so um, you'll see them coming up. And then some larger blanks have started piling up here. My DeWalt radio over there. And then in the case here, um, this is my 
PSI Barracuda 2 four jaw chuck and I know a lot of people swear by the Nova G3 and that's fine I have nothing against it this particular chuck came in this kit with multiple jaw sets um, woodworm screw there um, and an adapter in case you needed a different thread um, in this nice carrying case and it was considerably less than a Nova G3 and it works just fine for me so I like this chuck and that's what I use because this fit my budget so um, so that's the chuck that I'm using for those that were curious and then the last thing that I'll talk about is that I just picked up this land air filtration system um, off the local used market for a little under half of what it retails for for new and it is just a air filtration for the room so it cycles the air through that filtered unit and blows clean air out um, if I put it on high it will it will circulate the air in this room seven times per hour so that's pretty good um, for this space it works really well and it has a remote control so I can control it from here and it also has a timer system so I can set it on one, two, or four hours, and it will just run for that time and then shut itself off. That was something that I grabbed uh, in an effort to cut down on the amount of dust that's being created in this garage because, again, motorcycles, and one of those belongs to my wife, and she was not very happy about how dirty it was getting. So we grabbed that and hooked it up real quick and hopefully it's going to help make a difference so that is my space and that's about everything that i am working with um some of you guys have some much larger shops but this is me this is what i got okay guys well there you are that's uh my little workshop or you know not really a shop um welcome to my garage <laughs> So uh, thank you again for supporting my channel. And um, if you like this channel, please subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you know when the next video is coming. Uh, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks a lot, guys.